Hi there, this is Mesh on Pixel Perfect, and today I'm going to show you something really amazing, and that is how to unlock unlimited filters for your photos in Photoshop. And I'm not kidding, <laughs> unlimited filters. So here we are in Photoshop, and let me show you something straight away. So all you have to do is to click on the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient maps. Now, once you choose gradient map, have a look. What a stunning black and white conversion it has done. Now, this is one of the easiest and the greatest ways to create black and white conversions is to just create a gradient map from black to white. Amazing, works amazing. Now, this is not what we are talking about. We are talking about filters. So all you have to do is to single click here and then inside of the gradient editor, click on this gear icon and choose photography toning. Okay, hit okay. Now, have a look at this. So many to choose from. How amazing is that? Now, once you choose one, Hit OK, and then you can also decrease the opacity if you think it's too much. So let's decrease the opacity if it's too much. Also, what we can do is to change the blend mode to soft light or whatever is your favorite. I'm going to choose soft light and then go back to the gradient editor by single clicking here, not double click, single click here. And then you can choose the filter that you like. Isn't that amazing? But here's the problem. Here's the catch. This is limited. How to make it unlimited? Of course, you can create your own, but how do we make it unlimited in a very interesting way? So today I'm going to show you a way which will allow you to search for moods. For example, if you want to add a sunset mood to it, if you want to add, for example, a warm mood to it, a playful mood to it, it's going to be really, really fun and exciting. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's get some unlimited filters. So here we are in Photoshop and all of the images that you see in the tutorial is available for download. So check the links in the description. So first off, before creating gradient maps, let's do this. And this requires an internet connection. Okay. So all you have to do is to open up Adobe color themes, go to windows and then extension Adobe color themes. Now inside of Adobe color themes, you would probably see this screen. See it's loading because this means it requires an internet connection. So you would first of all, see the color wheel. So we would have to move from color wheel to explore. So let's have a look. This is the color wheel. You can use this to create your own gradients, but that's not very exciting. That's exciting. Actually it is. But if that's boring for you, let me show you something. You can choose color rules like triads, complementary. Let me show you something more interesting. Just click on explore. Now inside of explore, you'll find tons of color palettes created by people from all over the globe. Now, for example, I want a sunset tone. So I will search for sunset. See, amazing color schemes, right? So just search, click on, type sunset and hit the enter key or the return key. Now, tons of color palettes, right? I like this one, sunset camping. So how do I add that? I think there's a hair here. Okay, anyway, all right. So first of all, go to windows and then go to swatches. Let's open up the swatches and we want to add these colors here. I'm going to save it. I want to use it later. For example, just save it. Okay. So click on this three dots. You see three dots. Just click on them and add to swatches. You see all of those colors added. Now I don't worry about that. Just close it. All right. Now click on the adjustment icon and choose gradient map. Now, as you have guessed, single click here on the right hand side, I'll just double click and choose this orange color. Hit okay. On the left hand side, I'll choose the darkest, which one was there, this color, hit OK. And for the middle, I'll just click on the middle, double click here and cl choose this color, hit OK. Click here, double click, choose this color, hit OK. Click here, whoops, and choose this color. So five colors in a row I have chosen. I think I've chosen the wrong color. So this color here is fine. For this area, I've chosen the wrong color. I think I should have chosen this color. Okay. This looks amazing. Now, if you want to perfect it, you can, of course, click on the middle one and choose the location to perfect 50. Okay. Click on this one and choose the location to perfect 75 and click on this one and choose the location to 25 because 25 is the half of 50 and 75 is the half of 50 to 100, 50 to 100. If you half them at 75. All right. Pretty good. Now uh, you might like it. You might not like it. Hit OK. See how it is. Do you like it? No. Let's decrease the opacity. Have a look. Isn't that wonderful? The other thing that you can do is to change the blend mode to soft light. And I'm sure this will look amazing. So select soft light and have a look at this. Now you can increase the opacity if you want to have a look. Here's the before. Here is the after. So as you can see, you can create any color palette using Adobe color themes, search it out and find it out and just add it to swatches and then apply it. Isn't that exciting? Let's move to next example and this will get more advanced. Let's have a look at our next example. We have a beautiful picture of mother and son. So let's go ahead and create a gradient again. 
So click on the adjustment layer and choose gradient map. And then once you create a gradient map, focus on the mood. It's a playful mood, right? All right. So let's turn this off for a second. Let's analyze the photo. It's a playful mood. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up Adobe color themes and I'm going to type in playful P L A Y F U L. I hope that's the spelling. All right. Now let's see what it comes up with. It comes up with very interesting colors. So you can choose any one that you like. I kind of like this thing. I like this one vivid playful. I like the playful one. So you can choose any one that you like. Let's, let's use this one. What do you think? This one or this one? I don't know what you like. Let's go ahead and add this one. So click on this and add to swatches. Now this time it gets a little tricky because every color does not show a grading from light to dark. Like in the previous example, we had a grading from light to dark, but in this case, it's not the case. All right. So let's turn on the gradient and double click on the symbol to open up the properties of the gradient and then single click here. We're going to create this. Okay. Right inside, which color should I have? Should I have this or that? Let's choose yellow on the right. Hit OK. And for the left hand side, let's choose this color or this color. Let's choose this. Okay. We can move it to the right anyway. And for the extreme left, we can choose the black. Okay. Let's see how that does. And here's the trick. Like in the previous example, we were perfect about every location, right? Where the location would be, would it be at 50? Would it be at 25? You can be perfect or you can be playful. This is playful. You don't have to select all of the colors. Hit OK again. And let's create one more on the right and let's choose the blue one. Okay. Hit OK. Now this looks totally strange, but hit OK and change the blend mode to soft light. See how that looks. Decrease the opacity. It looks totally bad. We, we can, just cannot use it. Let's go back to it and play with it. Okay. So there's no hard and fast tool that you have to use this or you can also change colors, change the locations and play with this. Right. So let's take this out. We don't need it. Let's take this out. Let's have it this way. Does blue look good? I'm not sure. If I move yellow over here, how would that look? Wow. Now that is interesting. Now let's try bringing back this color. Okay. Try clicking here once again and try bringing back this color. Now it starts to make some sense. Yes, it does. You can be totally perfect about the location or you can just simply play with these things. Hit OK. And then once you're satisfied, just decrease the opacity because I think it's too much. Wow. Have a look at this. Isn't this so amazing? Before, after, before, after. Adds that warmth to the photo. Now, in case you don't want to use Adobe color themes or you don't have access to it, you're using an older version of Photoshop or if you just want to use something else, let me show you something interesting. Just go to coolers.co, this website. Now click on start the generator. Now let's have a look at this. It opens up a generator for color palette. So all you have to do, hit the space bar and it keeps on generating the colors and you can stop on anything that you like and you can export it. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. So for example, you like this. Okay. For example, you like this, you can click on export and export it. I'll show you how to export it, but let me show you something even more interesting. Click on explore. And there you have another library of ton of color palette. So uh, for this image, let's have a look at our next example. We have this image. Okay. So for this image, I want to add something hot. So let's go back to this thing. Okay. Filter. I'll just type in hot. See what it brings up. It's doing its process. Just look at the amount of color schemes it has. Awesome, right? So you can just click on this arrow for next. See a lot of them, right? Now, if you like something, all you have to do, click on export. For example, I like this one, hover over it, click on export and let's export it as a PNG. Click on PNG. I'm going to save that in my desktop. So right click here and choose save image as and a pop up box will show up and you can use this to save it in your desktop. Okay. I've already done it. I've already saved it. So let's close it. We don't want it anymore. So here's my desktop. I already have downloaded a couple of color schemes. So I'm going to choose this one and drag it and drop it onto that document on top of this document. All right. Let's make it bigger a little bit so that you can see. All right. Something like that. I kind of love it. Bring it down. Hit enter. Now, all we have to do is to add a gradient map between these, between this. All right. Click on the adjustment icon and choose gradient map. Okay. Now double click again to open up the properties. It's already open. Single click here. And then 
We don't have to add to swatches, we already have this. We need to make sure that sample all layers is checked. Okay, so sample all layers, why is that so? Well, so that it considers the layer above it as well while you're sampling, which is the color schemes layer. Now, once you make sure that happens, let's choose the colors. Double click on the right point and you can well, that's a confusion. Which one, which color to choose? This color or that color? Now, this color seems to be much brighter than the yellow, but that's exactly not the case. Let's choose this color for a second. Let me show you something exciting and this is important. Now, when this is sampling, it's white. Why is it white? I'm glad this happened. Make sure, let's cancel this. Make sure not the mask, but this is selected. Then you click here and then you can pick up these colors. So double click here. Let's pick up these colors. Let's pick this color, okay? You think this is bright? Let's pick this up, hit OK, and create a point here and pick the yellow. Now, let me show you something. If you double click, have, have a look at the brightness level of this. The brightness level is 85 in this case, okay? The brightness level of this color, the yellow color is 95, right? Hit OK, so that gives us a hint. And this is the tip. Make sure the brightness level, which is higher, is on the right hand side. Now that will make sense to you later when you change the blend mode to soft light. Click on click one more point and for this let's choose this color, hit OK and for the left hand side let's choose this dark color, okay. You can also choose the red if you want to, you can just insert it somewhere. Let's click here and let's choose the red, hit OK and hit OK and change the blend mode to, you already know that, soft light. Let's have a look. Let's decrease the opacity, it's too much. Let's increase it just a bit. We can edit it according to ourselves. So if you just take away the red, how does it look? Does it look interesting? Yes, it does. You don't have to use all the colors. It does look interesting. Just play with it to see what looks good to you. If you move this to the right, how does that look? You can also change colors if you'd like to. If you move it even more to the right, how does that look? Well, I think if I hit OK, if I change the blend mode to normal, that looks interesting as well. So let's go ahead and delete this. That looks totally interesting. And here I broke a rule. I put this on the right and put yellow on the left. I did break a rule. So sometimes breaking the rule works. We learned something. I might tell you something and that might technically be a rule. For example, keeping the brighter colors on the right and darker on the left. But then again, it's art and art is subjective and you can do anything that you want inside of art and you don't know what turns out to be amazing when. Hit OK and it looks totally amazing. I'm fascinated by it. So that's how you do it. Let's have a look at our last example and in this example we're going to be talking about masks. Alright, so let's have a look at this. I already created the gradient that we used in the first example. Right? Let's turn this on. It looks amazing but not in the face. It totally destroys the skin color but have a look at everything else. Look at these reds, they look so rich. Look at the background, they look so rich, but not the skin. What to do? Well, simply click on the mask, okay? Take the brush, you already know the concept of mask. Black hides, white shows up. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, and then flow an opacity at 100, make the brush a little bigger, make sure it is soft, and simply paint on her face. Just like that. Easy, isn't it? Like, very simple. Now you need to be careful about the edges and we can refine that later. Take our time to do that about the edges. Be a little careful about the edges. Okay. Now let's have a look. It is amazing before, after. So rich, so nice. So there you go. So that's how to get and create unlimited filters in Photoshop. And by the way, you can save them. You can actually save them. Here's how to save them. Once you create a gradient, okay? So for example, I have this gradient right here. Let me just open this up. All right, there we go. You can actually save it. For example, you can choose Sunset, Unmesh, okay? And New, it's saved. Now you can save the complete set by clicking on Save. And it saves the complete set. I already saved one set, all right? So we can save it and then you can open it by clicking on Load and you can click on this one and it loads that. I'll just load it, it loads one more, right? So that's how you can save all of the set. It just not saves one, it saves everything. Keep that in mind. So once you create a set of a ton of gradients, you can save them and you can use them later, right? Exciting. Hit OK once you're satisfied with the gradient. And that's pretty much it for this video. All we learned in this video was creating gradients and using it in several ways. 
So all you have to do, click on the adjustment icon, choose gradient map, and then inside of gradient maps, you can create any gradient that you like. Now, what we used today to create gradients was Adobe Color Themes and Coolers dot co you can use other sources as well but the idea here is searching for color schemes through different sources now once you find that color schemes you can use that color scheme to create the gradient inside of gradient map and then apply it now you can choose blend modes you can not choose blend modes or you can use opacities and masks to really customize your filter and work through your image and get amazing results. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. And by the way guys, if you want to connect with me and other awesome creators and create a community, please join our Facebook group Piximperfect Photoshop and Lightroom Creative Family. So I'll put the links in the description please join the facebook group we have a lot of good conversation over there you can post your work we can just get feedback on our work it's an amazing place to be thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating